I'm in a rather noisy lab speaking to Dr. Richard Court from the Department of Earth Science and Engineering. Uh, hi, Richard. Hello. Richard is a researcher in the Department of Earth Science and Engineering, and his main role is to study rocks, rocks from outer space. Uh, Richard, just tell us a little bit more about your research. I've been trying to find out what, the, what happens when meteorites enter the atmosphere of Earth. We look up in the night sky and we see this meteor flashing across the night sky, but what's actually happening up there? Does the meteor, meteorite just burn up and is lost? What we've been doing is try to simulate atmospheric entry. So what happens to a meteorite when it burns up through the atmosphere? What have you discovered? We've been simulating the process here in the lab. We take a sample of meteorites, heat it up really, really quickly, and analyzes the gases produced. And uh, we're standing right next to one of the machines that uh, you use to create the similar environment that uh, a meteorite is travelling through when it goes through our atmosphere. What does it actually do and what's it called? It's called a pyrolysis Fourier transform infrared spectrometer. Pyrolysis is simply the description of the process of heating of a sample rapidly so that it produces the gases. That's the simulation of atmospheric entry part. The Fourier transform infrared spectrometer bit... That just describes the uh, method used to detect and characterise the uh, gases that are produced. So you can simulate exactly what happens to a meteorite as it enters through the atmosphere. What happens to it? It gets very hot. The mineral and, uh, and organic phases within it break down and they re release gases. What type of gases do they release? It depends very much on the composition of the meteorite, and that can vary a lot. But the ones we're most interested in are the ones with lots of organic matter and lots of clays in. They release water, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, even a little bit of methane. And those gases are all very important for the early Earth because many of them would have helped the development of a habitable environment. Well, that brings me neatly on to some research that you have done in the past, uh, a year or two ago, uh, that basically said that uh, these meteorites, uh, during a period of an early period of Earth, uh, could be delivering gases, very vital gases, to the atmosphere that uh, could have helped life on Earth flourish. Very much so, yes. It's a very interesting part of Earth history when... Uh, the um, number of meteorites being, uh, that were falling to the surface of the Earth was very much greater than the number today. We thought that, uh, well, lots of these meteorites coming in, and lots of water and carbon dioxide being produced. How would this uh, alter the uh, chemistry of the atmosphere? Would it make it, the planet wetter? Would it make it warmer? Would it help the evolution of life? So what have you discovered? Did meteorites actually deliver enough gases, life-giving gases, to, to help spur life on, on, on Earth? On Earth, we believe that it could well have had a positive impact on the uh, development and evolution of life. Richard, your research is now focusing on exoplanets. These planets are Earth-like planets, but tens of light years away from Earth. Can you sum up in a few words your research and how it will help us to understand more about these exoplanets? Everybody is interested in the prospect of extraterrestrial life, the prospect of life on these exoplanets. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to learn how to recognize the signs of life on an exoplanet and in its atmosphere. This involves understanding what mixtures of gases indicate life and uh, which mixtures of gases are simply natural byproducts of the planet's geology.